You have to have both together. You have to definitely have to, and again, the priority, I'm going to say this again, is on the teaching of the Word of God. You have to have biblical truth being presented, being taught. But the Scripture does teach a style of preaching, and I'm going to give you two quotes, and you don't have to turn it. Write these down, though, on the back of your bolts if you want to look them up later. Isaiah 58.1 and Ezekiel 6.11. Isaiah is a great preacher of God, and Ezekiel also is a great preacher of God. These are great prophets that were used of God, and both of them are receiving similar instructions on how to preach. Isaiah 58.1 says, cry aloud. And crying there doesn't mean weeping. It means crying out. And in case there's any question about it, it says, cry aloud, spare not. Spare not means don't hold back, right? Cry aloud, spare not. And it says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Now, we don't have in our music ensemble here, we don't have any trumpets. But if we did, especially in a small area like this, if there was no muzzle on the end of the trumpet, that's probably all you would hear is the trumpet, right? Anyone knows trumpets? It's a loud sound. It's a very loud instrument. And... It's being used here for Isaiah. He's, God's saying, you know, cry aloud, spare not, don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. You make sure, hey, everybody can hear what you're saying because this is important. And then he says, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. This is the real problem that people have with hard preaching is that there's an expectation of, oh, when I go to church, I just want to be encouraged. I just want you to pat me on my back and, and get me through the week and things like that. Now, look, encouraging one another is important, and that it is an important quality of going to church. And that's what everybody's job is within the church, is to encourage one another and to help one another out. But when you come and hear the preaching from the Word of God, it's not always only going to be sermons that are just designed to make you feel good. Making you feel good could be a, a good purpose for preaching. If, that, if that's a particular truth in the Word of God, then great, that ought to be preached as well. And that is in, in many cases where people need encouragement, right? But it's also extremely important to call out sin and not just be real mild-mannered and say, well, this is what the Bible says. This is a sin. You shouldn't do this. But to cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and say, hey, thus saith the Lord, this is wickedness. This is sin. Don't get involved in this because you're making God angry. And there's a difference in the delivery and it's God's instructing his preachers to, hey, don't hold back. Because when you are impassioned about this, it's going to come across as having a lot more meaning, and it should. And look, this is, and I'm not saying this is something that like, should be faked or be a big phony and just put on an act, right? Because that's also not, and for those of you that want to preach and maybe pastor one day, don't ever fake the, the, the crying aloud and the sparing not and lifting up your voice like a trumpet. It ought to come naturally because you care about the Word of God, because you care about people, you care about the truth, and you need, you're, you're trying to express something that's extremely important. Amen. And when we see that here in Isaiah, Isaiah is warning the people about their sins and their transgressions. And what is he doing? He's warning them that, look, God is angry, and he's going to come and destroy you. Right? It's, it's, it's that level of, of excitement that needs to be there it, it would be similar as if, you know, you see someone's, your neighbor's house is on fire and you know they're asleep and they're not aware of the danger that's coming their way. And if, if you just let them continue on their way, you know, they're going to end up being destroyed. So when you see that happening, you're not going to go, oh, I don't really want to bother them too much, right? I mean, they might be sleeping. They're getting good rest, but I, I probably should tell them about that. No, you're going to be, hey, wake up, wait, you know, get, get up. You're about to be destroyed and you're going to be animated. And, excited. and this is the way that when, you know, depending on the subject, especially, but, but when you're preaching God's word and you're going to try to show people, you know, their, their sin and, and show them their transgressions, it's because you know that God is going to bring judgment and punishment there's a good reason to get excited about that. 
and to lift up your voice like a trumpet and don't hold back and just let it all out there because it's for their own good. Sometimes people just need to be waking up a little bit and shaking and say, hey, what's, you know, what's going on? Okay, well, this must be really important because it is really important. 